am mad. The disease has sharpened my senses, not destroyed, not stopped them. Above all is the sense of hearing acute. I hear all things in the heaven and in the earth. I hear many things in hell too. How then am I mad? Hearken, I have observed how healthily, how calmly I can tell you the whole story. say how first the idea entered my brain. Once conceived, it haunted me day and night. Object there was none. Passion there was none. I loved the old man. He had never wronged me. He had never given me insult. For his gold I had no desire. I think, I think it was his eye. Yes. His eyes resembled that of a vulture, a pale blue eye with a film over it that whenever it fell upon me, I, my blood ran cold, and so very gradually, by degrees, I made up my mind to take the life of the old man, to rid myself of the eye forever. Now, this is the point you fancy me mad. Mad men know nothing. But, but you should have seen me. You should have seen how wisely. I opened it just so much that a single thin ray fell upon the vulture eye. And this I did for seven long nights, every night just at midnight. But I found the eye always closed, and so it was impossible to do the work. For it was not the old man that vexed me, but his evil eye. And every morning, when the day broke, I went boldly into the chamber. How did you pass the night, sir? sitting up in the bed.
groan of mortal terror. It was not the groan of pain or of grief, oh no. It was a low, stifled sound arises from the bottom of the soul, overcharged with awe. I knew the sound well. Many a night, just at midnight, when all the world slept, it has welled up in my own bosom, deepening its dreadful echo, the terrors that distracted me. I say I knew it well. I knew what the old man felt and pitied him for it. <laughs> oh, well, I chuckled at heart. I knew that he had been lying awake ever since the first slight noise when he had turned the bed. His fears had ever since been growing upon him. He had been trying to pass them causeless, but could not. It is nothing but the wind in the chimney. It is only a mouse crossing the floor. It is merely a cricket which has made a single chirp. steadily I could maintain the ray upon the eye. The hedge tattoo of the heart grew quicker and quicker and louder and louder every instant. The old man's terror must have been extreme. It grew louder, I say louder every moment. You mark me well, I have told you I'm nervous, so I am. And now, in the dead hour of the night, amid the dreadful silence of that old house, such a strange noise as this excited me to uncontrollable
placed my hand upon his heart and held it there for many minutes. There was no pulsation. He was stone dead. His eye would trouble me no more. The night waned. I worked, I worked in haste, in silence. I, I tore up three plankings from the flooring of the chamber and deposited all between the standings. I then replaced the boards so cleverly, so cunningly, that no human eye, not even his, could have detected anything wrong. There was nothing to wash out, no stain of any kind, no blood spot, whatever. I had been too wary for that. 